Let's call the meeting to order for March 6th, the planning commission meeting to order for March 16th, 2021 um, at 6.34. And if we could everybody please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. All right. Mr. Bentley, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Michael Hardy. Michael Hardy is present from Macomb Township, Macomb County, Michigan. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes, this is Aaron Tuckfield. I'm attending virtually from Macomb Township, County of Macomb, State of Michigan. Mr. Provenzano. You're muted, Nunzio. Nunzio Provenzano, appearing remotely, Macomb Township, Macomb County, Michigan. Mr. Shudo. Jasper Shudo. Broadcasting remote from Macomb Township, County Macomb, State of Michigan. Mr. Spadafora. Dan Spadafora, present virtually Macomb Township, Macomb County, Michigan. Mr. Oliver. Charlie Oliver, present virtually from Macomb Township, Macomb County, Michigan. And Mr. Bentley, I'm present. Uh, I am on virtually. Um, I am in Macomb Township, Macomb, Michigan. All right, and I think everybody's here. Uh, approval of the minutes from March 2nd. Uh, we had a revised set of minutes sent out at 8.39 this morning. Hopefully everybody had a chance to look at them. We'll open it for discussion. Anyone? Motion? I'll motion. Okay. Second. Mr. Bentley's made the motion. Mr. Oliver seconded. Spadafora seconded. Oh, Mr. Spadafora, thank you, sir. Um, go ahead, Mr. Bentley. Call the roll. Sir. Mr. Bentley? Yes. Mr. Spadafora? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Provenzano? You're yes. on mute. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. All okay. right. Motion passes. Um, approval of tonight's agenda. Your discussion. Mr. Chairman, if there's no additions, deletions, or corrections, I make a motion that we accept the agenda as read. Second. By Mr. Shudo. Who seconded it? Mr. Provenzano seconded. Mr. Provenzano seconded. Okay. Mr. Bentley, call the roll. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Provenzano. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Spadaforum. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. And Mr. Hardy. Yes. All eyes. Okay. Now we have three items tonight that all rezoning. And I'd like Mr. Box, before we even start with item A, to explain what it is that we're doing here tonight and the process that the builders will have to go through to start construction. So, Mr. Box? Yes, thank you. Uh, so, as you mentioned, we're, the, they're all rezoning items this evening, mm -hmm. uh, which means we're simply changing the zoning that would apply to those uh, parcels. Uh, we're not approving any developments and buildings um, you know, it has strictly to do with what could potentially go there in the future. Uh, not with, there's nothing proposed to be built at this time. These are strictly resolved. <laughs> Good. Thank you. All right. Item A, the request agricultural AG to residential one family urban R1 permanent parcels 0808 Three two eight zero zero one zero eight zero eight three two eight zero 
0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
because they would be outside of the allowable buildable area setback requirements for agricultural. So in, in looking into this, uh, trying to understand how this happened, uh, we were able to pull some old uh, building permit applications. These are the, the two properties that have houses on them. So it looks like when the initial building permits came in, they were listed as R1, and along with our thinking that they were intended to be R1 this entire time. Uh, and somehow the fact that they were still AG slipped through the cracks, they were considered by building to be R1, which is how those houses got built, because they were applying R1 setbacks uh, instead of AG setbacks as they should have been. Um, so as we as we look at them now, um, you can see the proposed setbacks were it to be R1. Uh, structures that exist would come into conformity, the lot size meet the requirements, uh, and, and they would be buildable areas. Were they to remain, you know, to remain agricultural, I think lots two and three are essentially unbuildable. Not be much of a house that could be put on what's allowed in that in that space. Um, by, by making them R1, that it provides them an opportunity to build. Um, additionally, because they're non-conforming structures right now, uh, they would not, at this point, if they remain agricultural, they would not be allowed to expand whatsoever. They wouldn't be able to put in a pool, you know, add, add a deck, add, add a garage or a shed. Any, any expansion would not be allowed uh, because they're already non-conforming. Now, we do understand that there's there's some concern from, from these residents about changing. Um, if they were to change to R1, uh, things that currently exist, including the, some chicken that exists on one of the lots, would then they would be considered non-conforming. They would be allowed to continue. Not be required to, to move the chickens or, or take them out there. And continue with those because they existed previously, they would be non-conforming. And where they to sell the property, a new owner couldn't have chickens. The, the current owner can have chickens. As long as they have them there, they can, they can continue to have them uh, you know, for as long as they own the property. Um, I, I think this matches the, the master plan to be R1 zoning. Uh, clearly what they're being used for is R1 or single family housing. Uh, another concern uh, from the residents was the tax implications. Uh, I have confirmed with Assessing and Treasury that changing the zoning would not impact their tax, or their tax base on their use, not their zone. So they're already being used as residential, so their taxes. Um, I, I will say I have a letter um, from the four property owners uh, signed here. Uh, they did drop off the other day that they are opposed to this. I think, again, some of it has to do with the concerns about the chickens and about the tax implications. Um, but uh, for the record, they did drop off a, a document that they have here. You're all welcome to see it, um, that they are opposed. Um, no, I think we covered everything quite well. What you're faced with tonight in rezoning is we got two homes that can't expand. We've got two lots that can't be built on. Um, then, as opposed to they're not conforming, as opposed to can continue if the rezoning happens. So, what the planning commission face tonight is what's a better route to go? Uh, we look at, like say Josh mentioned, we look at tax implications. That's off the table. There's no tax implications to a rezoning at this point. And. Um, it did, I tell you, I've been, I can measure my experience in the decades. This is the oddest set of lots I've ever seen. So that's what I'm just throwing out the commission as you deliberate which well, what to do with the recommendation. Yeah, and I think in particular with lots two and three, uh, I, I really honestly, in my view, see this as us doing a good service. Right now, as we've stated, they're, they're unbuildable. If in the future they decide they wanted to put a house there, they would then have to come in and go through the rezoning process. They would have to pay the fee, go through the entire process that they're, we're going through now. Uh, it, because we initiated this, there's no fee for them. Uh, you know, we, we're going through the process on their behalf. Uh, so I, I guess, it, especially for those two lots, I would see this as a service uh, to them uh, rather than a disservice at rezoning. 
Okay. Thank you very much. I'll open it up to the commissioners for comments. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Bentley. Um, question for Mr. Box on the letter that was received by some of the residents. Uh, you had mentioned that one of the items was, you know, their, their concern regarding taxes. And you have uh, stated that those taxes uh, would not be affected. Um, so that's in response. Uh, the other was the chicken coops, current uh, existing ongoing operations uh, would not be affected as well, uh, as right. well as some of the other buildings. Uh, they probably could not be expanded. That's true. The chicken coop, as it is now, were they to be rezoned, they couldn't expand the chicken coop that already exists. Yeah, uh, but they, they, could, they could keep what they already have. They could continue <laughs> their <laughs> um, And then... Uh, were there any other items that they had concern uh, over so we can make that as part of the record? So in, in their letter, uh, it, it just says that they strongly oppose the rezoning uh, and, and that uh, the one owner in particular says that they purchased the lot. One of the main reasons was because it was zoned agricultural, contacted three other owners uh, and they unanimously agreed that they're opposed to the rezoning. Uh, they didn't list any other reasons. The only, only reason I know of the, the chicken uh, tax implication is because the gentleman who dropped the letter off expressed those concerns to me. And it does look like uh, there, there's several of them uh, in the audience tonight. So if you did have questions, it looks like a few of them are in the audience. So I would have one other question um, uh, related to keeping it agricultural. What would be the advantage? Uh, keep it agricultural. We know the cons are two, two lots can't be built on two and three. One and three uh, are currently non-conforming. One and four. And, yeah. Or one and four are currently non-conforming and they would be then uh, conforming uh, in the new. Correct. Yep. Um, any other advantages? They could expand their chicken coops if, if you kept it. Agriculture. And that would be it. Yeah. We have to open it up for a public hearing as well. I get a question. Mr. Oliver? Mr. Bach, a couple questions. One, um, do the owners on either side, I guess it's from one, do they own the empty lots or are they privately owned? Like yeah, somebody I else? believe all four properties are owned. Okay. And then it looks like it's lot number three that's never going to get water. Is that correct? On the ponds? <laughs> it has no, no access to the, either of those ponds. And, and, you know, for the record, the one pond is part of the platted subdivision. The other pond is actually not part of this plat. So, I mean, it, Unit 4 does go around it, but it's not part of this plat. And is there enough property... To get a vehicle in the back or at a quit or and I know that wouldn't matter here, but I'm not sure how wide that is off the top of my head. Well for me there, there, there'd be no building probably on that little strip. Yeah. That, that little strip that connects between the ponds. So where I'm kind of going with this, that lot don't get no frontage of water or water property. Right. So we get a new buyer that buys that lot. It's it's zoned R1. They they want to build a house there. They have children and they're worried about the water. Can they fence all through that and protect protect their? You saw how they can fence. Narrow path through the center. Right, that's kind of where I'm going. Yeah, that'd be the only thing I'd want to, you know, clear because that could be a concern for somebody with kids and didn't want near water. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Any other commissioners like to comment? Um, uh, just, just one for Mr. Bach um, or Mr. Shudo, um, if in fact. Uh, a chicken coop 
uh, wanted to be increased or uh, they wanted to increase their chicken coop, could they apply for a variance? Yes. And that variance could be uh, could be accommodated uh, and therefore that would be the only way that they could uh, they were increase. Would yeah. you, pardon me, wouldn't that be a use variance though? Not a dimensional variance because yeah, it's be not it's not allowed within the zone. That's correct. So, Use so, so a use variance would come back to us. Well, I don't think we can. Yeah. Well, I think ZBA can only do dimensional here. So I think that I think they have to go to the BOT at that. Yeah, point. I even have to go to the board. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But it wouldn't come to us or the CBA for a recommendation to the board first. Right. All right, so that is a path um, if they were concerned. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. Mr. Anyone else? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, just to Mr. Box, is it possible you'd mentioned that there's a letter? Can I, is it possible for me to see that? Actually, two copies of it if you want to pass that one on. I don't know, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if the petitioner or the petitioner, I don't know if the landowners are in the audience. But just my opinion, I think that it would be good to, I, Mr. Box summarized it. Um, I think it might be good to read this into the record. I'm um, just considering this, the landowner. I don't know what point would be proper to do that or appropriate to do that. But that would just that would be my. I think we can. Can we just enter it with the motion? Enter the letter? It's the public record. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Is there anything else, Mr. Tuckfield? Not, for, not for the moment. Thank you. Okay. Any other commissioners? comments or questions yeah mr chair i have a, um, a question for him. mr box if the planning commission decides to um, uh, to r1 for lots two and three um, but they decide not to construct uh, a dwelling or a residence that's permitted in there what are some of the other uses and that shame on me for not be doing that, you know, uh, or knowing it off the top of my head as far as what they can do as far as R1 if it's not being built. So if it's rezoned, you're saying, yeah, what else could they do besides residential yes. houses? Mm -hmm. Just residential housing yeah. for R1. I don't think there are other uses as far. I mean, you can't have a commercial building or office building, um, no agricultural uses beyond anything that's already existing. So, and what exists right now in lot two is the currently sized chicken coop. It's on lot one. It's on lot one. Yeah. Okay, lot two and three, to the best of our knowledge, they're vacant completely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? I just have to open it to the public and it is 657. If you're going to speak, state your name and address for the record. Um, and if you're your Zoom or star and I, just on your like first, we have Bill Riando. Go ahead. Oh. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Please state your name. Yeah. And... My name is uh, Phil Biundo. Um, we are the owners of Lot 53870, Romeo Plain. Uh, I'm the one who uh, wrote the letter and had the name sign it. Um, so I just want to do a first uh, appreciate uh, you guys actually spending this much time going over the detail of the lot and help us understand um, what we bought there. And I was under the understanding that, you know, that uh, the rezoning would have had to clear the gardens and clear the chicken coops and all that. Um, I, I clarifying that um, I speak for my behalf, but um, you know, we had the land, um, survey and we saw what the building envelope or anything. The other thing was the tax impl implications and uh, you've clarified that. So at this point, I'd like to withdraw that letter. Because we didn't know when we 
Oh, I'm Maria Buendo, his wife. When we purchased the lot, we were under the understanding since there was two well, you know, homes already on the opposite sides of us that we were able to build. We were never told that we would never be able to build. So by sitting in this meeting, you guys have cleared, clarified so much for us that we would have never wrote the letter in the first place. Right. So, I mean, now we, we feel like but, idiots. <laughs> but now, but now our, we are grandfathered into those rules. So, I mean, can no. we, add, we can't add a chicken coop if we wanted right. one? Right. We can't. Only the ones that are there right now can. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. We're okay. not. We, right now, we can't even build a house on there. Okay. If it stays agricultural. Okay. Which we did not know that when we bought it, or else we never bought it. Okay. Because we have intentions to build a home on there. Okay, uh, excuse me, Phil, but your voice keeps changing. Um, <laughs> if there's something else talking, <laughs> Sorry. If I still... so, my, my original plan was to build Noah's Ark there, so that's out the window. <laughs> yeah, completely. Okay. okay. So your request is to resend the letter? Correct. Right. And who, was, who else was talking? That was my wife, Maria. Maria. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Box, is there someone else? Yes. Um, Anna Ioko, you should be able to unmute yourself and speak. Hi, my name is Anna Ioko. I am the resident at 53980 Romeo Plank. Um, we would be considered parcel number one according to the plot. Um, being that Mr. Biondo already spoke, um, we don't have any issues. Um, our concern was more for them. Um, and being that you stated that they would not be able to build on that parcel, if it's not rezoned, we are fine. We, um, we don't have any issues. So we also would like to withdraw the letter on our behalf. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Max? Uh, doesn't look like there's anyone else with, uh, with their hand raised at this time. All right. Um, before uh, we withdraw this letter, I'd like to do, take it to our attorney and ask, because in the letter there are more than one signature. There are several. I think, I think the letter stays of record. There's two people that withdrew their objections. You can still rely on the other two objections. Uh, but, it, you know, I think it's understood based on the explanation that these people, one person with the objection. So you take that into consideration. Okay. okay. Um, I, I just want to clarify a couple of things if I could. Sure. Um, just for the procedure. So um, this is a rezoning that's been initiated by the township. Mm -hmm. Which uh, the township files the zoning uh, ordinance, the, the enabling act, uh, which allows the township to adopt ordinances uh, such as these to facilitate its, its zoning procedure. One of the ordinances uh, in the township is section 10.2407, which allows the township to initiate the zoning, especially when it sees irregularities. And so, um, what Mr. Box explained was there's two houses which are built based on R1 standards in an agricultural zone. Those are non-conforming structures. Right. And uh, pursuant to MCL 125.38, the elimination of non-conforming uses and structures in the zoning district, district is declared to be for a public purpose and for public use. And the legislative body may institute proceedings or condemnation or elimination of those uses. So, on a stark situation, mm -hmm. this is it. The two houses are actually illegal non conforming uses. Illegal non conforming uses are uses which occurred uh, in violation of the zoning ordinance. The AG, the, the properties were zoned AG but built under R1 standards. That is an illegal non conforming use. That's though, in those situations, technically. The, the, the township should be eliminating that, although we're going to cure that by zoning it over. Okay. Uh, different than a legal non-conforming use where you can't expand, where the, the, the structure existed, then the zoning ordinance changed. 
right. for instance, the chicken coop, right? The chicken coop existed. It was erroneously zoned agricultural, but it can continue to exist. You just can't. So the houses really need to be rezoned R1 so they can be in compliance with the zoning ordinance. Uh, and therefore, they are free to enjoy all the uses of R1. And since the ta it's taxed based on its use, which is R1, the tax won't go up. The other lots that are not built on, they're going to be taxed as vacant R1 lots. Those taxes will go up once you put a house on it, naturally, mm -hmm. but that's not where it is now. So this absolutely should be done for the benefit of the public. Um, based on our ordinances and the statute for two houses and uh, to be really in compliance with. This benefits them tremendously and there are not a lot of negatives. Okay. Do we need to make a motion with this letter or can we just include it in the record? I think as part of your motion, you could say that you, as part of your motion, you can include that letter in the record. Okay. Let's include it in the record and that can make a motion to or, or deny it, so whatever you choose. Oh, so put it in the, the yeah, you can do that full motion. motion, or you can do it in a separate motion, whatever okay. you choose. All right, Good. thank you. All right, um, under the chat, we have a Nicholas. Did he speak already? No, uh, no. and I can't pronounce his last name, Gara. Why are they building if they can't beat specs? If they can't meet the requirements, then no. So I just want to make sure I read his comments into the record. And does anybody have any comments on his on his on his, uh, on his comment? I guess. I guess right now there's no building being proposed. It's right now. Right. Okay. The buildings that are there were were done, you know, erroneously. A long time ago, decades ago. Sure. Yeah. And so essentially, we're cleaning that up now. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone else in the public that would like to speak? Mr. Box. I don't see anyone. Okay. At this time, I'd like to close the public's portion at 7:06. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Support. Supported by Mr. Tuckfield. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Okay, Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Uh, Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Shudo? Yes. Mr. Spataforum? Yes. Mr. Uh, Bentley? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. And Mr. Provazano? Yes. Motion passes. <coughs> I have a motion on the item. Mr. Chairman, if, if I could, I have a couple of questions uh, on this that I'd like to, to ask. Go ahead. Um, just to be clear, Mr. Box, and, and I believe we had Mr. Biendo, and I don't recall, I think I had uh, Anna was the other one. Mm -hmm. Those would be lots one and three, I believe. So this evening we have not heard from lots two and four, is that accurate? Um, and then the second question to uh, uh, Mr. Aloya, you mentioned obviously the, the, the houses is built, it's, it's an illegal non-conformance and passing over some other considerations on how they were allowed to build, how that potentially shares blame, moving aside that for the moment. That affects lots one and four only, correct? Lots two and three are legal conforming lots, even if they may not have a exceptionally large buildable area with, with, with which they could use, with the exception of, I believe, the frontage. The frontage is uh, incorrect and incompatible lot area. A lot area. <laughs> um, but that would be a split that the township would have participated in, so perhaps not the same issue that the houses are. Is that accurate? Uh, I'm not sure what your question is. Well, I guess my concern is I, I recognize the want here. It makes sense. I mean, it makes sense to anybody who's used to looking at zoning. It makes sense for conforming use. I, guess. I appreciate that lots one and three have withdrawn their um, uh, concerns of this. But I've, and, and I also recognize 
that we have the legal right to process the rezoning. You, you mentioned all, all place, and, and you might even say we have a duty to in some ways because of the non compliance. That said, particularly with lot two, I find myself extremely uncomfortable recommending a rezoning on a lot that is not me in the same legal, illegal, non conforming state that one and four are. It's not built anything on it. In theory, the owner might come back and say, I was going to put a house on it that fit within the buildable area and I wanted to use it for agricultural. I feel uncomfortable moving forward without hearing from, from lots two and, 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 and uh, lots two and four, I think. And, and that's, I understand. I guess, I guess my, my only comment to that is are you taking into consideration that these lots are actually platted as a residential subdivision originally? Because that's what you have here. These are part of. They were they, platted but never rezoned. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just wanted to make sure you understand. No, it's, that. It, it, is, it is a valid point. I. And that the master plan. The master plan sees R1, it as R1. And, and the chance that they get to build on that as an ag is. Is very slim. Yes. yes. Have, Mr. Box, have we have we made any attempt to contact the owners from two or four? Other than setting up a mail or email. I would just say for myself, uh, and it sounds like looks like Mr. Oliver might have a comment. I'm in favor of the rezoning. I think it makes sense. I get really, really uncomfortable when I don't know if the landowner wants to make a change and we say this is better for the landowner. It just, it makes me really uncomfortable. I understand your point. Myself, I would be for tabling this to try to give us more chance to talk to the other landowners. If the other landowners are fine with this, I feel like this is this is a slam dunk. It makes sense. It makes sense for all angles. Without knowing from them, for me, if we were to make a recommendation tonight, I would vote no without having it. So I just, just want to put it out there. I don't know what the rest of the board feels like, but I want to mention it. So. Okay. Mr. Sounded like um, uh, Anna uh, Ioko mm -hmm. had indicated, uh, and the other two, uh, that all of them were supporting the writer, the writers of the letter, and their intent. And uh, so, if you go by the intent of the letter, everybody was agreeing with. Uh, Phil and Maria beyond and, uh, and their concerns. And if we have satisfied their concerns, then uh, I think it's uh, logically uh, can be assumed that the concerns of that um, uh, lot two uh, would be satisfied as well. And, and Mr. Mr. Bentley, I think that makes sense. The only thing that I would add is that obviously, you know, we had um, Mr. and Mrs. Biondo, they wrote a letter relatively strongly stated um, and the communication was not able to be had with them. They did not understand this until this meeting. I don't know that I want to assume, logical as your conclusions might be, what lots two and four say. I think you're accurate. I think that's probably why they signed for. To me, it just, again, I- Anyone I, I, there hear me? Public portion is closed, sir, I'm sorry. Okay. Can we open it up? <coughs> it appears to be one of the, the landowners again. So. All right, let's open it up then. Who was talking? Um, uh, this is Ignatius Ioko. I'm at 53980 Romeo Plank. I would be lot one. All right, go ahead. All right. I know the gentleman that purchased lot two. He is intending on building a house. They're working on plans right now. And one of the things was they were worried about not being able to do a garden or a, a, the chickens and stuff like that. But I think it's more important for them to be able to build their house than to have the, the chickens. And uh, lot four, they're older, older couple. Uh, the daughter that usually takes care of this kind of stuff for them is in the hospital right now. And that's probably why they're not in the meeting here. 
but they were just the same concern I had with the chickens in the garden and, and stuff like that. As long as we can keep doing that like we have been, then we have no, no issue with the rezoning. And, and I appreciate the comment, Mr. Uh, Ioko. I, I hope you recognize my concern as well, uh, as far as making sure I hear from them. Yes, absolutely. And also someone mentioned if uh, vehicles could get between the back, between the creek and the ponds. And they actually can because the uh, drain commission has come out to clean the creek when fallen trees, trees fall in there and stuff. Between three and four. So between three and four vehicles can get through and then also behind the pond and the creek vehicles can get through. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. This one, one quick question, Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Oliver. We did notify everybody that's official. Correct. So we don't need, uh, thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion on the floor? Question for legal, would you want a motion singly or all? Um, if you want to, I would like to maybe just do it separately. Then I move to admit that letter to the record. Yep. And then a motion to approve or deny the, the actual request. That's it. Yep. Nope. Okay. I think he was asking the four lots. Yeah, that's how. Oh, oh, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, all four lots together. Yes. All four lots together. Four lots together. Four together. That's all right. right. As part of one request. Mr. Chairman, I, I would move on two things. One, to enter the letter okay. and make note that of the two exclusions. Okay. And uh, I would also move to change these four parcels from AG to R1. Mr. Mr. Oliver made the motion. Mr. Support. Uh, Mr. Bentley supported. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you call the roll, please. Yes, Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Bentley, yes. Mr. Provisano. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Mr. Spataforo. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. And Mr. Duckfield. No. Oh. Okay. Motion passes. All right, next item is a rezoning request agricultural AG to residential one family urban R1. Permanent parcel 0821200014 located on the southwest corner of 23 Mile and Heinrich. Section 21, Shaper Development Petitioner. Mr. Bach. Uh, yeah, and, and if you don't mind, I'm actually going to address uh, the next two items together. Okay. Um, so the, as you mentioned, these are on the south side of 23 Mile, uh, on the southwest and southeast corner of 23 and Heidenreich. Uh, these are parcels that are um, master plan for R1 for residential development. Rather large parcels. I don't have the numbers right here in front of me, um, but they're, they're rather large parcels. Um, uh, okay, here we go. So about 20 acres a piece, a little over 20 acres a piece. Um, I think the the petitioner here is is also the, the developer. I think with the goal of, of putting in some residential subdivisions, uh, so they would need it rezoned in order for them to proceed with that process. Sure. Uh, all of our departments have looked at this and, and are uh, in approval of R1 uh, rezoning. Uh, and I also want to point out for the record, I do have another letter for this one. So this was advertised in the newspaper uh, and it was also sent out a 300 foot mailer uh, for the property journalist. Mm -hmm. The first 300 foot mailer that was sent out uh, listed R2 instead of R1. Uh, we did send a revised mailer stating R1. So I do have a letter here, and again, I can pass it around if you'd like, uh, that they're opposed to the rezoning, but uh, the, the letter is concerned with R2 and how much density that would bring in traffic that would bring. Um, and so I, I'm not sure if it's 100% accurate. I would 
concern anymore or not. Uh, I'm hoping the person that is here will be uh, reiterate their thoughts, uh, but they, they're referring to R2 and it's actually R1 and that's largely because of the initial mail. Speaking of traffic, has there been any kind of looking at the traffic? And so we do not require a traffic study for any rezoning. Um, okay. And at this point, we can we can request them for actual developments. Uh, they're not required. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can request them. Um, we certainly do not request them okay. uh, until anything might be proposed as an actual development. Um, there, are, you know, there's a fair amount of traffic in the area. Uh, I think based on the master plan, this is what was planned to be there all along. Uh, and being R1, I think to be developed as, as a residential subdivision. Okay. And just a real quick question. The 23 mile is going to be expanded eventually, correct? Correct. They're out there working on a few portions of it right now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Petitioner, Mr. Schaefer, how are you? Please let's state your name and address, please. Uh, we are, our address is 6025 Northfield Road, West Bloomfield, Michigan, Oakland County, Michigan. Uh, we are the petitioners. We're looking to rezone the property in accordance to the master plan, which Mr. Bach stated was for three units an acre, which corresponds with R1. He's correct. Uh, we are only looking for R1 zoning, which matches the existing zoning to both our east, our west, as well as our south. Uh, to the north, there's a couple of large parcels north of a landfill that are still zoned agricultural. So what we're looking to do is in compliance with uh, the community's master plan. And uh, with that being said, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. The last thing I want to mention is that the, us and the property owners are currently, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm choking on the, a chip I had right before the meeting. I apologize. Uh, we're working on dedicating the right of way to the road commission. That's part of the 23 mile expansion, which I believe has started to occur, the least to the site, but uh, over the next year, it's gonna start hitting our portion of the area. Okay. Anything else? All right, then I'll open it up to commissioners. Commissioners. Mr. Hardy. Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I heard you read off the 08 21 200 014. Then I heard Josh say that he wanted to take two parcels together. Does that include the parcel number after the plus sign 08 22 100 017? That is correct. That is what Bach was talking about. Am I right, so there's two of them. Josh, am I able to share my okay, screen? Okay, thank you. It shows that there are two properties. One's on the southeast corner. The other one's on the southwest corner. They're both approximately 20 acres. Um, it may help if I just share this briefly. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you can see, uh, I believe the first request was for rezoning of this parcel on the west. And the next one will be for the parcel on the east side. Uh, yes, I got, question, I got a question to the petitioner. Um, is, is this a project that, that you intend on starting right away or just what, what's your intention on this? Uh, once we're able to get the permitting, uh, we would start on it. Uh, we, we anticipate it'll t you know, be next year sometime before we're able to put a shovel on the ground. It's not going to be this year. Uh, we won't be able to get through all of the permitting process uh, by so then. You're not, so you're not buying it just to sit on it. You're, no. you're moving forward. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Anyone else? Mr. Mr. Chairman, just a, a, a quick, quick question. On 20470, is that a county drain that runs through the middle, of it, middle or is that so that will split that piece of property with the drain? Correct. It's the Xander drain. Okay. That was just a question I had. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Anyone else? Commissioners? Nothing? Mr. Tuckfield? Okay. All 
All right, at this time, I'd like to open it to the public. It is 724. Mr. Box, do we have anybody who'd like to speak? Anyone who wishes to speak, uh, please virtually raise your hand through the Zoom app uh, or star nine on your phone. It looks like we do have the first one. Um, please make sure when before you speak, you state your name and address, please. That's for our Good evening. My name is Joseph Brock. I live at 20539 St. Martin's Avenue in Macomb, Michigan, which is adjacent to one of the parcels in question tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I have objections to the rezoning request for parcels uh, 200821 200, 200, uh, 014 uh, and the one ending in 100 017 due to the housing construction they will inevitably follow. My first concern is the impact that the construction will have on the drainage from the southern part of the western parcel, which is the one ending in 0014. There's a significant amount of water pooled in that field several months of the year. And historically, developers in this area have really given little thought to the impact of drainage on their properties, what they'll have on the adjacent properties. And I've questioned about who's going to remedy the flooding on, the, on our property when those thousands of gallons that are standing out there as we speak get diverted into our yards and basements. My second concern is the traffic. In the near term, the 23 mile road widening project is scheduled to run for the next several years. Uh, that project's already been delayed and extended, which I think is a trend likely to continue. Approving either of these rezoning requests now are gonna result in more construction traffic adding to their main point of egress, which is at 23 mile and Heidenrich Road. Additionally, the easiest path to entry in the Eastern parcel south of the drain is directly behind my home. The question is, are the developers permitted to use that entrance for the construction traffic? And if so, will there be restricted hours for heavy machinery and excavation equipment? Who will be responsible for the damage to the streets and curbs from the overweight cement mixers and dump trucks during that period? In conclusion, proven rezoning to add additional homes anywhere along 23 miles during the major road widening project is a bad idea. This request should be deferred until at least the road widening project has been uh, completed. Additionally, the residents owning properties adjacent to parcel uh, ending in 014 need protections from the township against poorly planned developments that may negatively affect the quality and value of a property. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Spratt. Box. Um, looks like we have one other one, uh, Mr. Mancy. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Mr. Mancy, please state your name and address. You may be muted, sir. Hello? Can you hear me now? Better? Go ahead, sir. Take your name and address, please. My name is uh, Robert Nancy. live in 20567. S.P. Martins Avenue, Macomb, Michigan, 48044. Um, I have a question to the petitioner when he said the drain will split the lot. That drain is away from me. My yard is about like only 20 feet. So did they going to build something behind my house or are they going to build something be behind that drain? Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Mr. Box, is there anyone else? Thanks, I believe it is. Go ahead and unmute yourself. You should be able to talk. Julie, are you there? You may be muted, so try to unmute your button there. Ms. Dites, are you there? She's muted. 
Uh, you need to, un if you can hear me, you need to unmute your button. And it's usually in the left bottom corner. It's a mm -hmm. microphone with a line to put red. It again. Yeah. Unmute and turn up your volume. Yeah. Uh, you need to unmute and turn up your volume, please. I don't see anybody else. Okay. There's no one else. All right. Ms. Dykes, if you would like to put your comments in the chat, that would work. Um, right now, we cannot hear you. Anything we can do on our end, Mr. Box? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Give her another moment. Dice, once again, there's a in the bottom left hand corner, there's a red microphone with a line through it. You need to click that. All right, well, I think we're going to have to just move on. There's no one else that would like to speak during the public portion. All right, then we're going to go ahead and close the public portion at 731 with the idea that if the state does make it work, we'll be more than glad to listen. Um, so we're closing the public portion at 731. Do I have a motion to do so? I'll move. Motion by Mr. Bentley. For Supported by Mr. Oliver. Mr. Bentley, call the roll. <clears throat> Mr. Bentley, yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Provisano? Yes. Mr. Shuto? Yes. Mr. Spataforo? Yes. Okay, motion to close the public hearing passes. Do we have a motion for the rezoning request? Mr. Chair, I have a question if I may. Absolutely, Mr. This is directed to Mr. Box, our planning director. Um, for a lot of the complaints, or at least comments from our residents, which seem to be typical with these type of uh, uh, proposed developments, especially at rezoning, when there's a lot of questions that are asked for the process further on down in the line um, can you clarify very briefly that after the rezoning that the petitioner in this case shaper development would have to go through a thorough and complete uh, site planning review process oftentimes you know with public hearings and if that's granted then they would have to go through engineering and permitting review which is another comprehensive process and that addresses matters like drain, uh, detention, uh, road frontages, uh, decel lanes, acel acceleration lanes, temporary or permanent construction access roads, and a lot of concerns that residents would probably have right now, although it's a bit premature with the rezoning request that's before the commission tonight. Would that be correct? Yeah, yeah, I think you, you all in that well. They, they have to come in for uh, preliminary site plan uh, after the rezoning process, which again has a public hearing portion. Uh, they can address the, these concerns there. Uh, that would be the first time we look at what might be built on this property. Um, after the site plan process, then they go to engineering planning. Uh, the engineering plans uh, get you know reviewed internally, uh, and we have an engineering consultant that also looks through those. Uh, again, approval. Uh, by, by the board and, and again, the public comment portion, 
uh, and, and the final site plan as well. Uh, again, they're going to get some, some chance to provide comments there. Again, we're not looking at that stuff tonight. We're looking at rezoning. Uh, and, and I know that the one concern was with drainage. Um, that's something that would be handled in the engineering phase of this. Uh, and, and I will say uh, quite often in these situations where there's concerns with, you know, standing water on, on property and, and drainage problems, uh, when these new developments come in, it usually makes it actually better uh, because because of the requirements that they have in the engineering process, uh, it usually makes those better for neighboring homeowners than more often than not. So, okay, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Bach. Mr. Chairman, I have one question. Josh, are these are these two separate parcels? Or are they one? Two separate parcels. They so are. are should, we, should, we parcel. two, should we have two separate parcel numbers or? It, it's items B and C. And okay, um, gotcha. Have, gotcha. Uh, two separate parcels. That I believe they have the same landowner and they are, are being uh, looked at by the same developer. Okay, thank you. And would they require two separate motions should the planning commission consider? Correct. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. All right. Do we have a motion on the first rezoning request for uh, Schaefer development? Well, Mr. Chair, I'll go ahead and make that motion to rezone that particular uh, parcel from AG uh, agricultural to R1 residential one family urban per parcel number 0821-200-014. I'll support that. Well, is it one or two? R1 or two? I'm gonna, I read that one. R1. R1. Okay, sorry. Okay. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Spadafora. Just one quick thing. Sure. Dan, could you enter in that letter also? Right. I was going to yeah, make that part of my motion to enter that letter on the way. Okay. Please. And the letter was by Robert Dietrich. Okay. And, and, I second, and I second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Mr. Bentley? Yes. Call the roll. Mr. Uh, Spadafora? Yes. Mr. Shudo? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Bentley? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Provazano? Yes. Okay, motion passes. All right, next on our list, I think and we've talked about it quite a bit, but let's just go through it anyways. Rezoning request agricultural AG to residential one family urban R1, permanent parcel 0822-100-017. Located on the southeast corner of 23 Mile Road and Heinrich Road, Section 22, Shaver Development and Petitioner. Mr. Box, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I think we, we've already discussed it. Okay. It's, uh, the neighboring parcel just across Heinrich from the first one that we Correct. discussed. And let's open it to commissioners. Anyone? No one? Okay, let's do the public start, open the public portion at 737. Is there anyone that would like to speak on this parcel? Anyone who wishes to speak on this parcel, uh, virtually raise your hand through the Zoom app or star nine on your cell phone. Um, let's start. 8573 is the last one to the phone number. Hello, this is Joseph Brock again at 20539 St. Martins Avenue, Macomb, Michigan. I'd uh, just like to reiterate the comments I had made uh, for the other parcel. And also I posted my contact information in the chat for the record. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, at this point in time, let's, uh, is there anyone else, Mr. Brock? <laughs> okay, let's close the public portion at 738. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Support. Supported by Mr. Duckby. Bentley. Call the roll. Sir. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Duckfield. Yes. Mr. Provenzano. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Yes. 
Mr. Batafora? Yes. Mr. Bentley? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hardy? Yes. All right, motion passes. Moving on to. Thank you. I think that was the portion over. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. Thank you. I, I keep making that mistake. All right. Do we have a, a motion for item C? Anyone like to make that motion? I'll again make that uh, motion to approve the rezoning request from agricultural AG to residential one family urban R1 for part permanent parcel uh, 08-22-100-017 together with the uh, letter submitted by the resident for the uh, record. Okay, thank you Mr. Spadafora. Seconded Four. by Mr. Bentley. Okay. Mr. Bentley, call the roll. Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Mr. Bentley, yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Provazano. Yes. Mr. Shudo. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Now, let's move on to old business. Mr. Bo Mr. Box, do we have any old business? We do not have any old business this evening. Okay. Uh, item eight, public comments on non-agenda items. Just a reminder that you have four minutes. Um, if you would like to speak, please state your name and address for the record. Anyone that would like to speak tonight? Remember, these are non-agenda items. Okay, and then we'll close the public comments and move to commissioner comments. Mr. Spadafora. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, just for uh, you, Josh, is it possible that uh, when we receive our packets, if there's any uh, letters from residents, because I know I didn't receive one in my packet, that they could be included in the uh, planning commissioner packets? Yes, the, okay. the one letter. Unless it came in the until after. Okay. Uh, the other one, yeah, I could have included that, and I will next time. Okay. Thank you. And even if it's just scanned in and sent via our email, I think that would work too. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of comments. Josh, I'd like to congratulate you on your one year with the township. And, uh, and Mr. Aloya, how are our bylaws coming? Working, they're coming along. I don't think I've believed any, I received any comments from the uh, planning commissioners. I intend to bring them soon, although I will not be here at the next meeting. I will be out of town. And uh, either Mr. Tomlinson is going to fill in or one of my partners, Mr. Orlando, will be filling in next week. So okay, I my fact that I will bring that uh, after the, the next planning committee, not the next planning commission. Okay, my next question is uh, April 1st, we're going to go live in the township hall, correct? Yes. Yeah, so. Josh, that, that is still to, we're still working out those uh, logistics with the supervisor that also may change depending on what the state comes down with. Um, as of right now, Macomb Township is not in a state of emergency. So the way that the governor's order is, is that we can have up to 25 people. We'd have to be here, meaning the planning commission would have to be there. Five people can attend the meeting, which gets a little confusing sometimes in terms of who stays and who goes. But I assume that if we had the petitioners here in the planning commission, that probably would be. So if we had a meeting like today and we had 26 people that want to participate in the audience, would we have people out in the hall and let people come in and come out as they made their comments? Really good question. Um, you were nominated the sergeant at arms for the meeting, Jasper. So <laughs> um, we, we have to figure that out. That, that's something that we're in discussions with, uh, with the supervisor in terms of how we want to handle that. Um, and so it's all a new world for us to figure out. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a handle on how we're going to do this because I know we're going to be limited in space. I went to a, a township meeting up by my cottage in Port Sand Lake. They limited the number of people that could go in and they let as one person made a comment, they let another pe person come in as they exited. That's all I have. 
I, we may, I, I can't recall if those screens outside uh, do uh, public publicize the, the meeting, so it may be just bifurcated that some people would sit outside. Get a good view done. And yeah. if they had public comment, we can let them in. We'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I think those the screens in the lobby, uh, part of the reason for putting them out there is to handle the situation. I'm wondering some people lobby comments uh, and the meeting will be broadcast on those screens. I don't think all the, the details have been worked out, but I think that's the intent. Yes. And the 25 people also counts all the commissioners and everybody that's already in attendance. And if you are able to go, or you are able to go remotely, if you have a medical problem, Mr. Box, uh, or there were four, four items. Uh, one was military service, one was a medical condition, and I'm not blank on the other two. The top okay, but there are four right. items. Then we'll work it out. It's time to explain. All right. Okay, that's all I have. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Anyone else? I do, but I think Mr. Bentley had raised the same first. So I did. Just a question on uh, the bylaws. You said you have received uh, no comments from anybody except for the initial comments. But we had, okay. we had, I had the initial comments, but I don't know if you remember, we gave till I think March 8th for comments. Um, and I've made notes and made some changes. I do have to finish it up. Um, I've not been able to do it as of today, but um, I plan to do it the next time we're here. We will not present it today. Then I would ask uh, status on, there were two other items, a zoning ordinance for signage, I believe it was, mm -hmm. and- uh, the Neighborhood, the town center. Oh yes, the town center uh, uh, ordinance. I think administration is still working on that internally, and we plan to meet once that's done, and that'll be done soon. But we, we did say that last meeting, that's gonna be a slower track. Yes, yes. and my question would be, um, I. I was starting to go through both of those. Um, I stopped. Uh, uh, I probably shouldn't have, but uh, I don't have my comments corrected. Uh, do you need those now, or are you going through and? Yeah, so, you know, we're going through administratively and we're going through legally, and I would probably save your efforts until we believe that we have the draft that applies with the contemporary law. Thank you. All right, Mr. Tuckman. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, just two items tonight. One, I just want to follow up on our last, well, I actually want to follow up on both rezonings. Uh, the second one at Heidenreich in 23, uh, just a follow up comment to make it as much during the, during the item, but um, obviously we, we have a lot of concerns every time we bring uh, property in front of us, regards to water and traffic. Every time I think um, Mr. Spadafora uh, referenced it, um, just a just a thought that maybe it would be good uh, to have a have a canned can sound bad. That's that's not really the intent, but have more of a specific answer that we can point people to. Maybe even a document that we can say, "Hey, here's the." what happens when it goes through uh, for a uh, water review. Uh, here's what happens with the roads so that we can point people to those and say, hey, this is gonna happen after the rezoning. We recommend you go read this. Um, it may answer some of your questions and, and bring back any Get that probably every single rezoning we see as, as I'm sure Mr. Spadafora can, can imagine. Um, with regards to the first rezoning, um, I, I think I gave most of my comments on that. Um, but I, I just wanted to reiterate it a little bit. Um, we all get along pretty well here and I don't mean to stop that in any way, but I just wanna really underline, I think it's really important, even when we have the ability to do something, uh, to take into account the landowner. Um, I expressed that I was uncomfortable with it. We, we moved on and that's fine. I know in the future, there's some thought that we're gonna be going through and looking at some ag parcels. Um, and potentially changing them. They're scattered around. There's some R1Ss sitting around. Like with this evening, I think it makes sense. I think we should do it. I hope that in the future, we have a lot more communication from the landowners on these before we bring them here. Um, it makes me, well, it makes me really uncomfortable um, even when we have the ability to. So just to comment on that, hopefully we can, we can uh, do that in the future. 
And that's all my comments. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Anyone else? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Josh, are we going to do a lot of housekeeping like this? We're going to see a lot of these parcels being changed to what they should be? I think so. I think, uh, as Mr. Duckfield mentioned, there's a handful of uh, remnant agricultural parcels uh, in the township that, that should be rezoned to um, what their actual use is. In most cases, it's going to be residential. Uh, and same with R1S. We have a number of properties zoned R1S, uh, but the the density that is in R1S zoning does not match anything that exists in the master plan. Uh, so it, both of those situations, I think, in the in the next year, you know, we're going to you know every few meetings try to bring a few of those forward uh, to try to clean up uh, the zoning. And every landowner will receive a letter, and there'll be a letter sent to the neighbor and neighbors to know about the rezoning. Correct? Yes, we'll do the 300 foot mailers. Uh, and to Mr. Truckfield's point, you know, I think it's it's appropriate to do a, a further reach out to the actual landowner uh, to explain to them, uh, you know, as we saw tonight, had we explained to these landowners in advance, they would have never written the letter. It, it appears uh, this 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 situation in particular was actually uh, brought up because somebody was interested in buying one of the vacant parcels, and they had their contact me and questioned the setbacks uh, and. We looked at the neighboring parcels and wondered, well, how did those houses get built? Uh, so it actually took several days of digging, going down into the basement, looking at files from the early 90s to figure out what actually happened here. Uh, so that that kind of prompted this, and so we quickly uh, tried to remedy the solution. Uh, but this was an unknown one to us, but there are a number of them that are known to us that should be cleaned up as well. So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. And when you send the letters to the folks that are 300 feet from, and we're just doing a rezoning, maybe what uh, Mr. Spadafora and Mr. Tuckfield, you know, suggested is we list what's going to happen in that letter, and then also put it on the website. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Then we're moving on to the Cone Township Board of Trustees liaison. Mr. Oliver. Thank you, Ms. Hardy. All right. Um, as we all are Macomb Township residents, we all are um, paying into the BIA, keeping that going down there, which is a beautiful museum. Uh, they have allowed us money for a statue or art. They chose Macomb Township this year. And I think it's tied in with the with our new library. So uh, we're now in a process of anyone that's got an idea of what kind of art, what kind of monument, not of each other. So that's already eliminated. But uh, if, if, and we're actually to the public. If the public has anything uh, that we can put in our square, the DIA is... Uh, to sponsor, I think up to twenty thousand. Wow! So um, it's a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting and uh, good for the township. The other thing is that the board uh, okayed. Uh, I think it's Fishback on um, the Meyer property to uh, work through the township because it appears that on the <coughs> northeast corner of 24 mile Hayes. Right now there's a Comerica Bank there. So it probably exclude the bank, but uh, it appears that Myers is uh, very seriously getting involved there. Uh, they haven't come to us yet, but they requested Fishback to do work and the, the board's approved that. So uh, I think that'd be great to have Myers in Macomb Township. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's not here yet, but I think it's in the process. Could you say that, Mr. I, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, things, yeah. things are moving forward. Yeah. So it's a, it's a new business model. Yeah. It's not a big super center. It's, right. it's a smaller footprint. Okay. So, yeah. Mr. If, you, if you look at the size of that Mr. property and the size of their traditional stores, you'll tell right away a, a normal store 
would not fit on that property. So it's definitely not going to be traditional one area, something different. So, so, so we're going to have a supersized Kroger at 23 and a small Meyer at 24. It's going to be yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah. size Meyer, yeah. But that's similar, good. It, probably it, similar to what we see at uh, Woodward Corners on uh, Woodward and Virgin Road. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good for that property. Um, uh, probably prior to that, there's been a few. The the owners have actually wanted a to uh, zone that out of commercial. And I think the board's kind of pushed back on that. And uh, I'm glad they have now because uh, uh, the residents still need somewhere to shop, somewhere to do commercial things, you know, get your hair done, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. So uh, it, it, it's good that, that the board is keeping balance with a lot of these properties. So and that's all to report. Okay, so if you got any ideas, well, anything uh, Abraham Lincoln to me would be hey, just fine. Um, that you could, uh, would say send that to Mr. Uh, Viviano, our supervisor. Yeah, okay, okay, thank you. All right, CBA liaison, Mr. Tuckby. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just mentioned that uh, we did have a meeting uh, last this last month, we have one coming up this month. Uh, we've been relatively busy. Um, um, and we continue to be. I know we've talked about some of the issues that we've been seeing as far as pools and, and width to length ratios. We're still seeing those, so it's good that we're addressing them. Um, and past that, uh, we're just moving along and trying to keep the business of the township going. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, planning department items. Um, well, one thing um, is our new planner started this week. Uh, so that's that's been a great addition to the office. Um, Dave was happy. Dave for uh, for <laughs> donating uh, our new planner to us. Um, eventually, we'll we'll bring her out to one of these meetings, and we all get to meet her. Uh, sure. She we reviewed her work many times because she's largely the one that's been doing the reviews on the planning side uh, already. So um, that's about it. Okay. Motion for oh, return. I, I do have one oh, other item. I'm sorry. Uh, just in reference to what Charlie brought up about the, the location um, that that we had the board uh, approve Fishback to look in the Meyer. Uh, so, for your reference, that property has a consent judgment on it already. Uh, so, that would need to be amended through this process. So, how much of that will actually come through Planning Commission, I don't know yet. Um, but just wanted to put that out there. that that property already has a consent on it. So it, some or, or none of it may make it through planning commission and may get handled through the consent judgment process. So, gotcha. Thanks. Thank you. So as, as it relates to uh, consent judgment, Josh, uh, <clears throat> when we deal with that, if, if we deal with uh, any property that has a consent judgment, uh, are, we talked about this before, but I don't know that it was ever finalized. Are we able to get a, uh, a copy, um, a, a uh, overview of what that consent judgment is? Because I don't know, there, they might be hundreds of pages, they might be five pages, but um, a synopsis so we know what we're dealing with and uh, what we can and cannot do. Yeah, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think once they're signed and, and you know, legalized, then it, it can be providing all their essentially public at that point. Yeah. Consent judgments, especially when they pertain to land, are recorded on the land. So they are public record, not only in the court, but on the title of the property. Okay. So, I mean, we certainly can include them uh, as a public record or we can figure out a way to, to summarize what's in there to identify really what your, your, your power is or what you're requested to do compared to what's in the consent judgment. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Skirdo or Mr. Box? No. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved by Mr. Provenzano. Support. And supported by Mr. Alper. Mr. Bentley, call the roll, please. Okay, Mr. Provenzano. 
Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield? Yes. Mr. Shudo? Yes. Mr. Batafora? Yes. Mr. Bentley? Yes. And Mr. Hardy? Yes. Motion to adjourn at 7.59 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.